love booktube to reiterate neither the space opera renaissance nor the hard sf renaissance were harmed in the production of this video although we came pretty dang close because they both fell from my bookshelf because i was pulling down some books and that top of the bookcase is not the most stable and yeah these two have a tendency to want to fall so they fell so i've cleared them all off and i'm going to move them somewhere else until i rearrange my bedroom but this is the second uh, tag i'm going to be doing today it is the sword and sorcery tag so the tag was originally created by geek legion of doom and i saw it on steve donahue's channel and i will be linking both down below now the sword and sorcery tag is primarily a movie and television tag but i'm going to alter it so that i can also talk about sword and sorcery books and short stories so let's get on with it uh prompt number one Favorite sword and sorcery movie or novel or short story? So for movie, I'm going to go with the 1980s uh, Conan the Barbarian, uh, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger and um, James Earl Jones. I really love that movie. Um, that's probably my favorite sword and sorcery movie, even though... I do wish the Conan um, stories were more properly adapted, which I'll get to later. Uh, number two. Oh, I forgot the uh, short story. For the story, I'm going to go with, um, as far as novel is concerned, I'm going to go with um, The Sorcerer of the Wall Deeps by Kaya Shante Wilson. This is a more contemporary sword and sorcery. Um, novel and I've talked about it quite a few times in the past few months but definitely I really really love this novel or you know I'm considering it a novel that'll be a whole nother rant um, and then for short story I'm going to go with um, The Scarlet Citadel by Robert E. Howard and The Dark Eidolon by Clark Ashton Smith. Um, so The Scarlet Citadel, um, Conan is King of Aquilonia, and he is aiding um, the King of Ophir against the King of Koth. But in actuality, uh, Ophir and Koth have allied against him under the auspices of the court sorcerer of Koth, uh, Sothalanti, um, to pretty much put a puppet on the throne of Aquilonia. Conan is captured and imprisoned in Sothalanti's fantastical dungeon. Um, he eventually escapes with the a, with um, another rival wizard of Sothalanti's, and Conan retakes his throne. The Dark Eidolon is the story of Namira, a sorcerer who was as a young man or young boy um, trampled by uh, the future king of I'm blinking on the name of the kingdom but so the boy flees from the capital city he goes to the desert where he finds a wizard who train teaches him to become a sorcerer he becomes one of the most powerful most evil sorcerers in this land and he eventually returns to the city to enact his terrible revenge and it is amazing all right uh number two worst sword and sorcery movie novel and short story you've ever read um for the worst movie i've ever seen i'm gonna go with a tour i was rooting for the spider by the way yeah <laughs> it's a tour it's terrible um it's about basically 
a land is dominated by um, this spider kingdom who guards this gigantic spider. And it's prophesied that a young man will come and defeat the spider, and he does, and it's just terrible. And again, I was rooting for the spider. Uh, for novel, I'm going to go with um, The Sundered Realm. It's part one of the War of Powers, and it's by Robert E. Vardaman and Victor Milan. This book is just terrible. Just, yeah, just, ugh, terrible. A uh, short story, hmm. I don't think there's really a short story that I could really say is really didn't do it for me, so I'll not touch on the short story. Uh, number three, if you could pick four sword and sorcery movie characters to go on a quest with you, who do you pick? Um, so obviously that would mean it would be a five person band, which means I would be involved in, I'll claim for myself the role of wizard, so we won't touch on the magic usage. And that would be more of a, maybe it's once upon a time style because it's not too overpowered and it's not too underpowered. So be just about right. Um, as far as who I would have with me or who I would run a quest with, one thing it would be it would not be Conan. No. As great as he is, as strong and powerful and skilled, he also has the terrible habit of screwing over every alliance, every group he's part of. He almost always will seek to take it over. I mean, he does this in um, A Witch Shall Be Born. Um, obviously, he does it to the King of Aquilonia, although the King of Aquilonia deserved it. Um, he's just, he'll join a band of mercenaries or pirates or tribe and he'll eventually take it over and become the boss. So he does have a terrible habit of usurping his the leadership. Unless of course Conan is in charge. Which I guess he could be. But I would go with probably sorry about that. <sighs> telemarketers definitely will not be part of the party um, so I'll probably go with um, Dar from Beastmaster um, quite like him um, Red Sonia uh, Sinbad I think he would be a really good leader and the fourth one would be hmm maybe Jarell of Joyery. I think that would that would be my four. Although that could be subject to change, but I'll go with that for right now. Uh, number four. You can pick any weapon from a sword and sorcery movie. What do you pick? Um. Oh. How about okay? Going back to number three. Switching out a uh, Jarell for Xena. I forgot about Xena. I don't know why, but I'll replace Jarell with Xena. Um, the glaive from Cull. Uh, number five. What sword and sorcery intellectual property needs a reboot or remake? I'm going to go with Conan. Um, I think that. I mean, as good as I think the Conan movies are, even Conan the Destroyer, um, I do wish the Conan stories more faithfully adapted the, you know, the Conan films would more faithfully adapt the um, films. Or let's try that again. The Conan films would more faithfully adapt the Conan stories by Robert E. Howard. Um, like I know Steve Donahue in his video mentions doing an adaptation of the Phoenix on the Sword. 
Um, I would go with a an adaptation of the Scarlet Citadel, um, the Hour of the Dragon, um, Red Nails. I think would be really interesting. Um, the uh, People of the Black Circle would be cool. So yeah, I would actually look at like more of adapting the short stories as movies or even some kind of combination of the two say um phoenix on on the sword or scarlet citadel or something like one of the, the movies where conan is king of aquilonia as a sort of frame and then have several other of his adventures kind of interspersed as sort of him kind of calling, remembering back to his earlier days, I think would be really cool. But anyway, but I would go with um, Conan. I almost want to say He-Man and She-Ra, but they're already in the process of getting rebooted, so we'll just stick with Conan. Number six. What is your favorite sword and sorcery TV show? Uh, I will second Steve Donahue's Xena, that is, I mean, a really good. Although, for me, I really checked out from the series once she killed off the um, Olympians. That was really, yeah. At that point, I really didn't care for the series much after that. Um, I would also point to, um, there was actually a Conan TV series in the mid to late 90s that I thought was really good. It had an adaptation of The Tower of the Elephant that I remember. And then also there was a Sinbad series around the same time that I thought was really good, but I haven't seen either one in ages. Um, number seven. With a few exceptions, sword and sorcery is traditionally one of the most unpolitically correct genres. Where do you see this genre going, or what would you like to see? Now, the thing about sword and sorcery is that it's not a continual... New material isn't continually published. Sword and sorcery has... Um, period brief very brief a year or two of a flourishing a sort of a renaissance if you will and then decades of practically nothing or just maybe the occasional sort of more nostalgic sort of story um i mean this is as true of literature as it is of film I mean, and really with sword and sorcery in film, you really had the 80s. Um, from like Conan the Barbarian through, say, I'm not entirely sure about the timeline, but it was really just the 80s. I mean, you kind of have um, like the more recent 2011 Conan the Barbarian, which was really good too. But as far as like say... Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of more contemporaries. It's maybe a bit of a stretch to call them sword and sorcery. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so it's very much sort of stuck in the 80s. And you know, a lot of sort of things that were taken for granted in the 80s would not really fly today. Um, and then as far as literature is concerned... Um, I mean, the situation's a bit better because every new generation of um, sword and sorcery writers are really, yeah, you know, pushing the genre forward. It's not like a continual rehashing of Robert E. Howard, and it's more like there's more stuff being added into it. I mean, you have the contributions of Michael Moorcock with Elric. I mean, even. In Howard's own day, you had a C.O. Moore's Jarrell of Jewelry, um, and then later you have like Kenneth Lee. Um, in fact, 
Um, also, uh, uh, Charles Saunders Imaro, up to, say, Sorcerer of the Wild Beats. Um, uh, the Sword and Sorcery and... Uh, Swords and Dark Magic. The new Sword and Sorcery edited by Jonathan Trahan and Lou Anders. I think really has a good uh, chunk of um, like new Sword and Sorcery that's really sort of pushing the genre forward. But what would I like to see? Um, I would like to see, I think... Um, like a greater range of character i mean sticking to what i mean sword and sorcery does best but a new range of characters with new concerns and new problems and new struggles um i think would really be interesting um also maybe new ways of um stylistically telling the stories um there's one story in uh Swords and Dark Magic that I thought was really fascinating. If I can find it real quick. Um, see, A Wizard in Wysazen by C.J. Cherry. I thought was really good. Um, I need to really reread this anthology. Um... So yeah, I mean, really, I think a more um, sort of playing with the genre of really looking at new characters and new ways of, uh, yeah, new problems for those characters, I think might really work. Um, but we shall see. I mean, we'll probably overdo, I think, for another um, sword and sorcery flourishing. So we'll see what uh new writers will have up and number nine do you have any special editions any special edition releases of sword and sorcery movies or merchandise that you love no i don't keep, uh collect movies basically all of my movies like they're all online i don't collect movies obviously i collect books uh Number nine, what Hollywood actor would you cast as He-Man or She-Ra in a live-action movie? I know Noah Centineo is supposedly, um, has supposedly been cast as um, Prince Adam He-Man in a, in a new live-action adaptation of He-Man. Um, I don't, I mean, I haven't really heard anything new about it in a while, so I don't know if that's still true. Um, I know it's in Taneo, I think, I don't know him as an actor. I really don't watch much in the way of movies, but um, I think he would, uh, maybe. Um, I mean, I know obviously he looks the part, whether or not he can act, don't know why, I don't know. Um, also maybe Austin North, or um, Aramis Knight, or I would go, I think, if you're really a younger, I mean, because He-Man is supposed to be in his late teens or early 20s. So an actor more along those lines. And I would say the same probably for She-Ra. Well, maybe I guess by KJ Appa might be a really good Prince Adam. And then, uh, yeah, and for Shira, um, I know there's several actresses on Riverdale, maybe, I don't know, um, or Dove Cameron, maybe, I think that's, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, I don't really pay much attention to movies, so. Yeah, I'm kind of throwing names out there. But generally speaking, probably there's a up-and-coming actor who actually really would fit the part who, you know, I don't know yet. So they would be the perfect for He-Man and She-Ra. 
<laughs> uh, number 10. What is your favorite on-screen dragon? King Ghidorah. <laughs> it is definitely King Ghidorah. Uh, also, Acnologia from Fairy Tale. Um, 11. What is an underrated sword and sorcery movie you can recommend? I'm not going to recommend a movie. Um, I'm going to recommend some books. So, obviously, there's uh, Swords and Dark Magic. I definitely highly recommend. Um, um, Jarell of Joyery by C.L. Moore. I do not believe the return of the sorcerer was harmed in the making of this video either. And I highly recommend um, the work of um, Clark Ashton Smith, especially his um, I think it's Poseidonus Hyperborean and his Zothique. Definitely his Zothique series. I love the Zothic stories that I've read. I've loved. Um, I wish um, there was a collection of just those stories. I know there was a few decades ago, probably like 40 years ago, but they are wildly expensive. So I'm collecting Clark Ashton Smith as I can, and I definitely would recommend his work. Um, I'm holding this one up because this one is the most appropriate for the uh, subject. I have another one that's just like a spider crawling up on some blue jeans and then some weird medieval thing that's on the Penguin Classic. So anyway, that was the Sword and Sorcery tag. Um, if you enjoyed the tag and would like to talk about Sword and Sorcery, um, please do consider yourself tagged. And I will hopefully see you tomorrow with another video. Thank you. Have a great afternoon and please stay safe.